welcome back to Ralph's Sort of True Stories. You know, I've had a lot of different jobs in my lifetime, and one of the jobs I had, as probably a lot of people have, is working as a bartender. I can't say I ever attained the uh, exalted position of mixologist, whatever they are, but I did work in some bars, and most of them weren't too fancy. Most of them were local joints. One place I was working, I had a pool table, I had a kind of a straight bar, you know, full service. This fella came in and he had a monkey on his shoulder, one of those organ grinder monkeys. And, uh, you know, I walked over to help him. This monkey jumps off of his shoulder, runs over, gets in my garnish tray, starts eating the pearl onions, eating the maraschino cherries, eating the olives, eating the lemons, eating the limes, eating everything. And I yell at this guy, gee, many Christmas, get that monkey out of here. Well, the monkey gets scared, <clears throat> jumps over, gets on the pool table, swallows the cue ball. And I grabbed this guy and I said, listen, you know, I can refill the garnish tray, but I only got one cue ball. So I'm holding your monkey hostage till you come back with a replacement cue ball. And he does. He comes back, he brings me a cue ball, he apologizes, and I don't see any more of him for like four months. Then he comes in with this monkey, on his shoulder, and I walk over and I stand in front of my garnish tray and I just stare at this monkey. Well, fellow down at the end of the bar wants a Jack Daniels, so I got to turn around and serve him, and when I turn my back, that monkey jumps down, grabs a pearl onion, shoves it up his butt, and then eats it. Grabs a maraschino cherry, shoves it up his butt, and eats it. And I turn around, I see this, and I run back to this guy, and I said, give me any Christmas. It's bad enough he's eating my garnish tray again, but shoving it up his butt first? That's going to make my patron sick. I don't even want to see that. And the guy said, oh, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He says, you know, after the last time we were here, when he finally was able to pass that cue ball, now he measures everything before he eats it. <laughs> well, that is something. That is something. Well, I had even a stranger thing happen to me. I was uh, tending bar in this place. It was a pretty nice place, actually. Uh, cocktail lounge and all. And this guy comes in just about closing time. Everybody else has left. You know, the restaurant staff is gone. So he comes in and he says, I'll have a double water and scotch. And I said, what? He said, I'll have a double rocks and scotch on the water. I said, you mean you want a double scotch and water on the rocks? That's what the hell I said, you son of a bitch. And I said, well, listen, you know, it's obviously you're inebriated. I've got insurance. I got a license to protect. So let me just have you go do your drinking somewhere else. Oh, God, don't I just go do my drinking somewhere else? Well, that's a hell of a suggestion. But do you realize, do you realize who the hell you're talking to? I said, okay, so surprise me. Who the hell am I talking to? I'm glad you asked. You have to be talking to the only person in the world, in the whole wide world, that can Fart the Star Spangled Banner. I said, you said you could fart the Star Spangled Banner? That's what I said, you son of a bitch. I said, I'll tell you what. I've had a kind of a boring night. He said, if you could actually fart the Star Spangled Banner, I'll buy you a triple scotch and water on the rocks. No problem. No problem. It's no problem whatsoever. So this guy backs up to the wall, undoes his slacks, bends over, squats and strains, and he poops all over my wall. I jump over the bar, one hand on the bar, my feet are over, I grab the guy by the time, about ready to knock him out, and he says, what the hell are you doing? I said, you SOB, you shit on my wall. He said, give a guy a break, give a guy a break, for crime and his sakes, even Bruce Springsteen's gotta clear his throat. Needless to say, I knocked him out anyway. One other kind of weird thing happened to me when I was bartending. This, I guess you call them a couple, uh, two Siamese twin brothers came in and they sat down at the bar. You know, and of course they're co-joined, they call it. Of course, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be friendly and not, you know, point or laugh or, or seem bewildered or anything. So I just make friendly conversation like I do with all my patrons, and I said, 
Oh, so are, are you fellas just in town for a visit? And they said, no, 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 we're here to, we're here to catch a plane. I'm James and this is John, my brother. I said, oh really, really, where, where are you headed to? He said, well, we're, we're going to England. We go there uh, once a year for the last 10 years. Oh really, so you, you really like England? Oh no, no, we hate it, we hate it. The weather's terrible. Weather's terrible, the food, there's nothing like the French. The food's just not very good. He says, uh, and the people. You know, they speak English, but you, you can hardly figure out what they're talking about. No, no, we, we really don't like it. I said, but you just said you, you go there every year for the last 10 years. You know, why do you do that if you don't like it? He says, oh, well, you know, that's really the only chance my brother James gets to drive. <laughs> so I guess there's some rationale behind that. One time I was bartending in this sort of cowboy bar. Uh, it was a rodeo dance, actually. Uh, after the rodeo, so the place was really, really crowded. A lot of young guys, a lot of young women, slinging drinks just as fast as I could move. Uh, had help, but you know, still very, very busy. All of a sudden, this guy comes in the front door and he shoots a bullet in the ceiling. And I look, and he's got a, a nine millimeter. So I figure he's got about you know nine cartridges and one in the chamber that he just shot. He said, "I'm here to call out." the lousy SOB who's been banging my wife. And there's a voice way in the back that said, son, you ain't got enough bullets in that gun. So I guess, I guess his wife got around a little bit. Anyway, thanks for uh, listening to me talk about some of my experiences as a bartender. I'll be back in the next segment and finish that set of stories off. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Remember down at the bottom, Thumbs up, subscribe, tap on the bell, and we'll let you know as soon as we get that next video loaded. Thanks for watching Ralph's Sorta True Stories. Mm -hmm.